this on my birth certificate. <laughs> uh, my title is His Holiness Swami Shivananda Giri. You can just call me Swami. Just fine. I am a student and representative of His Holiness Maha Mandeleshwar Paramahamsa Swarupananda Vishwaguru Maharaj. And one day I will tell you what all of that means in English. <laughs> all these wacky, multisyllabic <laughs> pronunciations do actually have meaning other than uh, trying to confuse the Western, Western mind. The Western mind is what we're here to address. His Holiness and I, the reason we incarnated into Western American bodies was to bring the practice and the Shakti, the energy of a very ancient esoteric system into the Western mind. Because you can do it too. It's not just yogis sitting in caves. That's not necessary at all. Not at all. I have already had the very good fortune of watching the first person who received Shaktipat through me within less than four years of practice and guidance, he was enlightened and liberated. He works every day, <laughs> nearly, <laughs> at least Monday through Friday, in the tech industry, computer stuff. I don't honestly understand what it is he does. He has a wife, two daughters, normal, normal, normal life now, 
that human is completely enlightened and liberated. And just, just living, just doing what he should do, not a big deal. <laughs> So what we're here to do <clears throat> is to move those who are already on the path and working with His Holiness and I closer to the goal, as well as to see if you would like to move towards this same goal. That's all we do. We help people get to the goal. The sum bonum of all human existence is to discover this. And not just to have an experience. You get blissful, you feel the unity of the universe and, you know, all that kind of thing. But then that goes away and stuff starts to suck again. And you're getting pissed. See, that didn't fix it. That's a glimpse. That's nice. Tickles. But even that state is not the goal. The goal is beyond that. But it's something that you'll experience. And you will experience it directly, consciously, and in the way most fitting for you. It's not about me. It's not about His Holiness. It's not about reading a book. It's about doing this, going within and seeing <laughs> directly and consciously what happens. Those who can hear what I'm saying will also feel what I'm saying. To whatever degree that may manifest, that's great. So, I lay my services at your feet. They are absolutely free. All I want is for you to wake up to what has always already been the case. You just forgot. You had to. Or individuation would not stick. Freedom is not freedom of your individuation from influences, both positive, negative, and neutral. Freedom is from the very thought of the name and body you take as yourself being a limitation. That thought, thought goes away. And what you find is just a bigger you. It's not different. It's just you. You just understand things better. Things start making sense. And there's all kinds of nifty neat, nifty neat things to uh, to experience. There's something for everyone. If you will pick it up and do it, you will get results. Period. It's that simple.
Reset? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Namaste. Good day. This would probably be a good point for you to talk about an experience or so. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, let's see, it was uh, this this last Sunday. Now, I think I mentioned before that I've been in insomniac for years, and you know, with meditating, basically at this point, I'm finding I have a lot more. I'm, it's a lot working a lot better for me in the evenings than it is during the day because um, the light shining through my eyelids seems to kind of distract me at this point. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so I've been doing it regularly before I go to bed, and, um, you know, I don't always fall asleep right after I'm done with it, but uh, the other night I had left my computer on and had a few things I wanted to shut off uh, after I was done meditating, and I just completely conked out while I was doing it, and it was a little unexpected, and, you know, I, I can't by any means say that I'm cured of my insomnia, but I can definitely say that meditation helped, <laughs> um, and... I don't know, it was a little weird the way that it, that it had happened because up until that point, every time I had meditated, um, you know, in my mind, the, the speed of the rate of which uh, the mantra was repeated in my mind was always constant and the tone is always constant. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, that time that I fell asleep without even trying, it, it was almost kind of like going up and down uh, you know, peaks and valleys on a roller coaster, the way that it was speeding up and slowing down in my mind. But the pitch, you know, the tone stayed the same, however fast or slow the mantra was repeating right. in my head. Right. And that was the last thing I remember, was noticing that the mantra was speeding up and slowing down. And then I woke up the next morning. Right. Now, when you, when you noticed this, did you also notice that you were not causing that to occur? Yeah, yeah, that was another aspect of it, was that it was not happening of my evolution. It was something something else was making that happen. Right. That's the way. <laughs> One day you will come to see all of this stuff. Just like that. And you'll go, holy crap. <laughs> but that's excellent. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And like I said, I up until recently, I had, you know, I maybe kind of half-assed meditation, but I've really been trying lately. And it's if you actually try, it does seem to have an effect on you. Well, I can. What I can tell you is, when a Shaktipat master gives an individual a mantra. If they will do it, they will get results. It must be that way. It's how it works. This is the most ancient <laughs> way of humanity coming to the realization that they are divine from within. This is Sanatana Dharma, the eternal way, or the eternal law. This has been going on <laughs> as long as there's been humans. <laughs> um, we, we are generally a fairly quiet lot, but... His Holiness and I did not incarnate into American Western bodies in order to be quiet. We came to crank the heat up and to enable people who feel an attraction to what I'm talking about, to enable them to pop like popcorn <laughs> and not suffer so much during the process it's really it's really just that simple I'm not trying to convert anyone into 
anything other than being awake, enlightened, liberated. I don't care which word you use to represent the concept all humanity is moving towards. It's the same thing. The Sufi masters of Islam are talking about the same stuff I'm talking about. The Taoist masters of the East are talking about the same stuff I'm talking about. Jesus, who was never referred to by that name during his life, if that was indeed the case, was talking about the same stuff I'm talking about. It's in you. Don't get it by bowing to <laughs> a body. The image of a body murdered on a cross. <laughs> what? Whose idea was that? I, th I think it would be better to uh, <laughs> to discuss the actual teachings of the Christ figure, Yeshua. Is Brandon on the line? Yes, he is. Would you pot him up, please? Hey guys, He's live. Namaste, Brandon. Namaste. Brandon wrote just an awesome piece that I have that I have asked him to to share with us today, and we're going to discuss this. So. Brandon, when you are prepared, please share that with us. You want me to go over the whole thing? Or? Yeah. I would like you to read it. It's very well written. Okay. I'm a better writer. And then we'll, discu and then we'll discuss. Okay. We'll open up the phone lines. We'll get the whole thing going. All right. Um, so it's called, uh, what did I call that? the teachings of Christ versus the teachings of the Christian church or something like that. Uh, so it starts with a quote from the Gospel of Thomas. His disciples said to him, Show us this place where you are, since it is necessary for us to seek it. Jesus said to them, There is a light within man, and it lights up the whole world. If it does not shine, he is darkness. Um, so I wrote, notice that Jesus never corrects the assertion that the kingdom, in quotation marks, must be sought. The implication is that Jesus wasn't just teaching belief, blind faith, and worship. Uh, he was teaching yoga, or the work of uniting oneself with the divine, through direct conscious experience while still in the body. Notice also that he states there is one light that lights up the whole world, and that, is, that it is in man. There is, uh, that's also another parallel to the yogic teachings that God is equally present in his entirety in all manifestations and that this is the source of life that animates all gross matter. Uh, so Jesus wasn't inherently any more divine than any other manifest form. His divinity, his divinity was simply more fully expressed. Within this one paragraph, the entire essence of the yoga tradition is accurately conveyed, either directly or implicitly. It is saying that Jesus taught direct and conscious realization of God through introspection or meditation in a disciplined manner. The yogic assertion that the divine grace of a fully realized guru is another necessary ingredient uh, to the formula um, is also corroborated here. This is Christianity as it was taught by Christ. It wasn't until 300 
uh, plus years after Jesus left his material form that the oral disciple guru tradition that constituted Christianity was replaced by the Council of Nicaea, or Nicaea, I'm not sure how that's pronounced actually. The first of many councils formed to dictate the doctrine of a new religion suitable uh, to be used by the Roman Empire and Catholic Church to claim rights they didn't really have to justify crimes against humanity and to psychologically enslave the general populace. This is what became present-day Christianity. And I'm not really going to elaborate other than to mention it on uh, reincarnation, except to say that it wasn't declared heretical until 53380 at the Second Council of Constantinople. Um, so if you, like many devoted Christians I, that I have known, um, are intent on serving God to the best of your abilities, don't do yourself the disservice of thinking you were observing the teachings of Christ when you were really following the teachings of the Church. They aren't the same thing, and a little res uh, research will prove it. If the Gospel of Thomas doesn't do it for you because the dogmatists left it out, let's take a look at what the official canon of Church-recognized Scripture has to say on the matter. Behold, the, uh, sorry, behold, the kingdom of God is within you, Luke 17:21. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, 1 Corinthians 3:16. Um, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female he created them. Genesis 1.27 I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, invested thee with thy powers and attributes. Though thou hast not known me, I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Isaiah 45.5 and 7 is, uh, and this is a quote from Jesus, Is it not written in your own law, uh, ye are gods? Um, John 10, 34. Uh, Matthew six twenty two says, If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. This describes both the metaphysical process of the consciousness transcending duality, realm of manifest, gross matter, and merging with God, also a physically observable uh, phenomena that accompanies this and the cor uh, corresponding process of kundalini rising to ajna or third eye chakra. This occurs in advanced meditation. Sorry, frog in the throat. <coughs> um, so, almost done here. Um, Psalms 46, 9, I think, uh, says, Be still know that I am God. Stillness of mind is one of the eventual effects of meditation as distinct from contempla contemplation in this context. And it facilitates the direct conscious experience of God. And uh, that's it. Very well done. That's what I wrote. Thank you. Very well done. Because, see, our task is not to disparage or disrespect people of other faiths. Many of them have simply been quite intentionally misled. That's all. Most people that I have worked with have graduated from religious life to spiritual Okay, left, they walk, most of them have walked away from organized religion structure. No longer attending church and that kind of stuff, okay, as we understand that here in America. And have then moved on to spiritual exploration. New Agey, Vedic, Japanese, Chinese, and any any of that stuff, shamanism, you know, all these all these various <laughs> that's a bad time for that phone call. Uh, all the various isms. 
Okay? They all play out from inside the mix. And each approaches it in a way they can comprehend. Most of them, a good portion, were delivered by an individual who had this inner experience and knowledge. And none of them ever said, I am the only begotten son, referring to <laughs> the body. Jesus never instructed anyone to worship him. What he did was he taught them what he did to become what he was. Those were the disciples. He gave them the real meat, the inside dope on how all this works. For the, for the rest, he would speak in parables to communities and, and gatherings. And just put it in a, in a life-oriented story where a point could be drawn that would then be of value within the life of, of the person hearing it. And let me tell you, this <laughs> when the eye becomes single and the body is full of light, it pretty freaked me out at first. Because I'm just laying there, and there's, there's, well, there's just this bright pinpoint of light that if I were to, you know, say from the outside where it was coming from, it would be right between my eyes. But I keep opening my eyes and looking, and there is no light. To, <laughs> to cause this, you know. And then it, it got to the point where uh, if I were if I were in a a room that was completely dark, but I had my eyes open, then I would see this light exactly the same way I did when my eyes were closed, even if my eyes were open. It was no difference at all. And it started like that. Um, who, uh, reset, who else we got on the line? Let's, let's just bring the lines up and turn this into a mix. Okay, we've also got uh, Michael on the line here and uh, Nick uh, Sonic I'll bring him on though I'm not sure he has much to say he... oh okay okay if he if he's tuned, if he's on to listen that's groovy you don't have to that's good uh, get with him through the chat thing and see what he wants to do yep um, Mike are you there yep. Can I be heard? Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for calling. How's England today? He's in Wales. <laughs> oh, you're in Wales now. Well, namaste. Oh, namaste, namaste Sonny. <laughs> Internet decided to crap down. What was that? I don't what think was I that, Mike? Yeah. He's breaking up. He's breaking up, yep. Captain. Is that Brandon or Michael? That's uh, Michael. Oh. Brandon, sing out for me, please. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Just checking hey, your I'm audio. Oh. <sighs> Guess what, boys and girls? It really sounds like that inside you. 
sort of a vibration going on that you're not aware of while you're sitting here watching American Idol and having a wank at, at you porn and um, whatever else you do. Going to Friends of Freeman, listen to Alex Jones, whatever else, you know. That's going on the whole time. You just didn't know it because nobody else wanted you to know. Me? I want you to hear that. I want you to see this stuff on the inside. And it doesn't matter how it manifests for you. It doesn't have to be just like somebody else's experience at all. That's not the expectation. There would be no purpose in your individuation if the objective was to be a copy of someone else. Kind of a waste. You just forgot. This forgetting is so strong, <laughs> it takes some dedicated effort to move beyond it. But if you do not take the time away from your continual processing of sensory information and thoughts, won't get this. So it it you know, you can be a Christian, you can be a Jew, you can be a Mohammedan, you can be Taoist, you can be Shinto, you can be Yogi, you can be agnostic, you can be atheist. I don't give a fig about any of that stuff. You're a human. What I do, and what I teach, and what I'm giving people takes them <laughs> inside. And then, what you're kind of doing is you are following the path of creation backwards. From the bottom of your spine, up through your spine, out the top of your head, and back all the way to the source, the very first light and vibration. That's what you're doing by doing the meditation and the mantra. And there's all kinds of cool stuff to see along the way. And to feel. And to do. And as you do it, you'll notice that what you were finding during meditation begins to leak out into your day, into so-called normal life. And it gets pretty good. Wouldn't you say, Brandon? Yeah, as a general rule. I've, in my experience, like I've noticed sometimes it like stirs stuff up, too. I think it was you that pointed it out that that's just like me seeing stuff uh, going by on the way out and this, yep. I think that I think that sums it up pretty well have any of these issues that you were dealing with or those specific thoughts repeated themselves uh, yeah sometimes they're on a loop for a while but you know, it just kind of gradually fades into the background more and more until there's, like, more good stuff coming up to take its place with more contentment right. and more peace. That's true. Mike, are you able to speak? I'm here, but the connection's still a bit shoddy. Oh, well, now I hear you pretty good. How has your practice been? Um, so far, so good. For what it matters, I've been sitting here and there mostly. Whenever something happens and I get awestruck, I take a few moments to meditate. Very good. Very good. Make sure you do lots and lots and lots of mantra. Yeah. 
anytime it comes up, anytime is fine. Okay? Doesn't have to be kept in meditation. Just do it whenever you feel like doing it. And the more you do it, the better you feel, and, you know, generally. And it's a process, but it will also shake loose the crap. But that will get tossed in the fire that is <laughs> going on internally. Brandon has had some of those, <laughs> some of those warm effects. <laughs> Yeah, I've Have been having good effects, Swami. Steve, namaste, Swami. Namaste, Steve. How are you, sir? Doing very, very well, much better now that you've come to join us. So, it's what's good. going on for you? Well, I'm getting ready to go on a short vacation, and I just thought I would get some nice words of wisdom before I went. So, I'm tuning into the Swami Myth of Living show. And also, I've got a beautiful woman sitting next to me as well. Well, that always helps. <laughs> Hello. Although, in my experience, it can be a distraction. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's a welcome distraction in my case. Um, <laughs> so, what uh, have you got any sort of little experience sort of stuff you would like to share? Well, I've just been... Um, it's been a, a busy week. It's always a busy week um, leading up to going on vacation, just getting loose ends tied up sort of thing. And I've, uh, my Om Namah Shivaya mantra has been playing a bit of a part in the in the quieter moments when I've been taking a moment to sort of just step back from things. And it's been helping to recharge. Been excellent. If you were to make the effort to do that twice a day, sit down just do the mantra just for 20 minutes if you can do that incorporate that into your life twice a day do it whenever it arises during the day or or at night also do it as you're falling asleep you will yeah. be amazed what will happen yeah well uh, actually I was listening to uh, reset what he was saying earlier about um, doing his meditation and uh, having things to do but just falling asleep. <laughs> that was cool. I've done that a couple of times myself. That's fine. It's, it's yeah. supposed to happen like that. No big deal. Yeah. Um, I if you good find when that happens. If, I'm sorry? I find it's good when that happens that you've just been, you know, you feel you've got yeah, some chatting going see, on in your head. You're, and you what you're defining as sleep really is something else, but it's as sleep is the only thing that comes to mind. Yeah, would you, you would you define it as necessary resting? Yes. <laughs> you have yes. to just shut up, shut off. Yes. And you find yourself just shutting off. Yes. Mm. Very good way to describe it. Yeah, I, did, I actually did that today because I had to wait for somebody who never turned up. Mm-hmm. And I put the radio on in my car, which was a huge mistake because that's all uh, <laughs> just pumped you and um, propaganda at me, so I turned it off and I just right. actually, I did a mantra for a couple, couple of minutes, not 20 minutes, but a couple of minutes, well, and I did find myself nodding off, because it was good. very, it was a very strange day, it was both sunny and cold today, huh. yeah, we had, we had a lot of chemtrails rain, so we, the sun was um, out, but not doing its job properly, not being allowed to do its job properly. Yeah, it's weird that, isn't it, how when there's loads of chemtrails, that it gets a bit colder, even though it's really sunny. Yeah, it's really sunny. It's really bright, but it's cold. But, yeah. Oh, hey, let me tell you guys. Um, when you guys get finished with your with your practice, you'll be what's called a jivan mukti, someone who is free while living. Okay, completely enlightened and liberated. Then you. Just your mere physical presence will affect the vibrational frequency for a range of approximately 24 miles around your body. Cool. 
like a little. Uh, and you <laughs> need to think you're you're like a big freaking transmitter. Yeah, is this like, like an like organ generator? Flow. Yes, but that it's very real. This really is what's happening, and we, my friends, are the NWO's worst nightmare. Mm, yeah. Come to just look at them and smile and transmit what transmit and give it to others to do the same thing. That's all. That's that's kind of, you know, <laughs> the mission. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I had uh, an interesting um, experience uh, last Saturday. We went to a, uh, uh, a talk, um, and the, uh, the the speaker got us all to uh, do a little meditation with him, um, just going through the chakras. And um, so, once once we've done all the uh, all the bits to the uh, to the ground chakra, uh, all just there for a little while, and uh, sort of find this big space um, that's all encompassing. And then when you when eventually you, you open your eyes again, it appears that the world outside is smaller than the space inside your head. Okay. And is that what found to be the case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, I, I, yeah, I've had that experience quite a lot, um, where you get to that, um, you, you sort of, not that you, um, that you lose your body, but you just sort of not really focusing on your body. And, exactly. Uh, and and the and the space. Um, will rush in <laughs> to fill the gap. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you see, you um, I've also had, um, whilst meditating, um, the, the, the actual feeling of riding out of my body and sort of uh -huh. looking, looking at myself uh, and then, and then um, injecting that to sort of look down on the earth, which is always a good one, uh, and then come back, come back down. Um, but they, uh, yeah, the 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 space, this, um, getting the space one is uh, a very interesting one because yeah, when you, because when you see what what people do is when you get into that, you will you you are beginning to intuit infinity because neither the mind nor the senses can wrap around that yeah it is that which the mind and senses are <laughs> inside of yeah so by by that means is it important to stop the chatter in your head or yeah. do you just go with it well okay. the, uh, eventually the chatter will stop um because the mantra helps to stop the chatter doesn't it Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and and breathing as well. Uh, simple breathing exercises just um, also uh, clear that to uh, to do the mantras. Um, yeah. Sort of. You do the rhythm, don't you? You sort of breathe the rhythm with the um, the uh, the on the. Yeah. Fire. Any any number of breathing patterns can occur. Because, see, what you guys are doing, because I gave you this mantra, you're doing the mantra, you're getting the effects, things will, will occur in you that you have never studied in this life. Certain breathing patterns, yoga postures, um, just spasmodic movements of, of the body and such. These are, these are all part of the what is called OHAS, O-J-A-S, which is filling up the subtle 
control system inside is one way to put it. And as this stuff is all coming online, pressure testing, these these things will occur. You can you can make funny sounds, your breathing can change, and it but it will all be just like Reset was talking about, where he just noticed the mantra speed was different. But he didn't make it that way. It will also be that way when these things occur. You just find it. Oh, huh, okay. <laughs> you know, um, it, it, you're not required to do, you know, hours a week of any sort of practice at all other than the mantra and the meditation stuff. Because all the rest will happen in you automatically. So it's not like, you know, you have to <laughs> do X, X, Y, Z breathing technique every single day for, you know, no, 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 no. None of that at all do you, do you guys have to do. It will simply occur all on its own, and it will do what needs to be done, and that'll be that. Much, much easier than the old way... <laughs> <laughs> of doing all these hard breathing exercises and, and all that sort of thing. Okay, I just that feel like it's a nice thing to do, like throughout the day when you have moments of when you don't have to think about what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? Just the, just oh, the yeah. quiet moments. The objective is to get it to the point where it's like the song that gets stuck in your head. Yeah, it, yeah. It just comes up all on its own. You don't have to think about doing it. It's happening. Uh, well, some, I use it to combat that as well. To be honest, you know the the what the, the the crazy cheesy songs that come on the radio and you find yourself, <laughs> oh, right. you know, combat and uh, using the mantra to sort of, you know, I'm I'm not sure that they're such a bad thing. The songs that get stuck in your head, but it's uh, not often. Often are not my favorite songs, if you know what I mean. Right. You are you are you are using the mantra exactly as it should be used. Excellent. Just add the sitting, shutting the eyes, being totally uninvolved in anything outside your body for twenty minutes, twice a day. And amazing stuff is going to happen. It can't, it, it simply can't not happen. Mm. Yeah, it, it feels like a shower sometimes, like a, a bit of a, a quick wash. Yep. You, you will probably, Steve, you will probably find an experience coming to you where... Um, you, you will perceive from, from the inside a very bright light as if it were shining from inside the top of your skull and shining down inside you and like raining down. That is an ancient technique that has you've been doing for a long, long time. I, I, I hear you so, saying about rain. It certainly, it certainly feels like rain. When the, yeah. And however you may perceive it, whether it be tactile, visual, whatever, doesn't that's not the important part. But that you are getting something is the important part. <laughs> hmm. Because you are experiencing it directly and consciously. And that is the only way to make progress in this path. And you know what I can tell you? You may read about the masters and, and their big flashy experiences and that. Some of that stuff will scare the crap out of you. Mm -hmm. And it's not that much fun. If anyone knows people who are genuinely psychic and not putting on some kind of a show or manipulation, there's a lot of times they don't want to know this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. 
Namaste, Swami. Namaste, Fajrik? Yeah. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, it's been nice listening to you. That was the beautiful girl, I was telling you both. <laughs> well, you I, know, I couldn't believe he was no, talking about me. <laughs> I, 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 this is a very rare treat for me. I'm not normally around on a Friday evening. Oh, really? So, I'm mm. usually working. But, um, yeah, so it's been really nice to join in. I only see Shiva and Shakti. I only see Namaste. Shiva sitting there. Well, while we're all paused here, I guess, yeah, we do have another caller on the line, Swami. Okay. Uh, Who that? I don't know. We have another caller from the 253 area code, which is the same as Brandon. Namaste, caller. Who's this? Namaste. This is Kit. This is whom? This is me. It's, uh, it's my mom. It sounds like her connection is bad, though. <laughs> oh. Hey, Mama Herb guy. Hello, Mama <laughs> Tammy? Yes. Oh, cool! Thank you for calling. Oh, awesome. Namaste, Tommy. Namaste, Tommy. I would say, Tommy, we love your son. Yay! And we love you too. I I wanted to thank you. Touching on about uh, Christianity, um, it clears out of the struggling week. That uh, Brandon knows uh, Christ. Teaching. Well. well, I enjoyed that piece very much, and we didn't really have uh, a topic for today's show. And and when I read that, I just went, "Well, that was very well delivered, quite insightful." Used good references. This is this is content right here. This is education. <laughs> Infotainment. There you go. That's Subject. why we. That's why we, the independent media, exist. Yeah. Is so things like this can get out. Do you think that the mainstream media would put a guy like me on? <laughs> I would hope so. Mm. One day. Yeah! When oh, we are the uh, main video. Let's get Swami on Anderson Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to pinch his nose. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I would pay to see that. Oh, I'd do it for a nickel. <laughs> I'll contribute the rest of the ashram operations. <laughs> yup. I'd be like, Aster! <laughs> Gloria Vanderbilt! <laughs> well, that would be utopia, wouldn't it? I'm trying to be on TV. Here's what I want you guys to think about. This is actually... <laughs> the task we are engaged in. Sharing these things that we are experiencing with one another and with all sentient beings who feel any attraction to what we're talking about at all. Because if you just start going in there, <laughs> you'll find enough reasons to keep going back. <laughs> it's not... Uh, <laughs> it's not difficult. It's, it's not like having a job to do. This, this is the only knowledge worth pursuing. Quite quite literally, according to 
the ancient texts of, of our tradition, what we consider knowledge gained through sensory input is actually bondage. <laughs> Because you have to be the you have to be focused as the individuation in order to learn that way. Our effort here is to awaken to that communal self. All individuations manifest from. And all it requires is looking somewhere you didn't know to look before. Because you were too busy with other stuff. And, and all that other stuff you were doing is fine. Whatever it was. Failures, successes. I don't care about any of that stuff. What's important is what we're doing now. People are going to be popping like popcorn. <laughs> it's just amazing. Ed, okay, that um, I talk about Ed. He's he's like I said, he's completely enlightened, liberated, just living every day, raising his kids, doing his job, loving his wife, going to the store. Pooping behind a pair of shoes every morning. Whatever. You know? But that effect is subtly available to every living thing within 24 miles of his body at all times. You can do that too. In fact, that's kind of the point of the whole human individuation thing anyway is the joy of the rediscovery of this. You guys feel like carrying on another hour? Um, I've got to go to bed because I've got to get up early in the morning. <laughs> All right. We, we, we're getting up for 4.30am, but um, I'll be here for another, for another little bit. Yeah, we can go sure. on. Sure, call for me. Sure, sure, man. I think uh, I think BTR might drop me once the the broadcast no, no, is over. No, but what's the? Um, oh yeah, Delta. that's right. Oh, because we've got like a minute left. Yeah, but so we're go going into yeah. going to go into podcast, Brandon. You'll catch it on the archives. Okay. Oh, well, can we bring Brandon? I'll be looking out for it. Oh, uh, wait, can you get Brandon in? Reset? Hey, he's not logged into Skype right now. He's calling from a landline. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, All right. I don't have Skype. That's the issue. Okay, that's that's what I thought that was the issue. Okay. Bye, All Brandon. Right. Okay, bye, bye. Bye, hey, Brandon. Good, uh, I will speak with good you soon. Good hanging out with all you guys. Take care. Namaste. Namaste. I'm going to say good night as well. Lovely to speak to you, Swami. Nice, nice right. to speak to everyone. We love Take you. care, bye. Have a good time in Scotland. Yep. Bye. You guys, enjoy your vacation. Thanks, Sam. I'm, I'm hanging out for a bit longer. Oh, okay. Right. We are in the podcast. Yeah. All righty then. And, and Brandon's mom still here. Yes. Yeah. But Brandon... Hey, Tammy, there you are. Well, yeah, Brandon, Brandon could have stayed on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be good to... <laughs> okay, everybody, please, let's... Um, I'm ready to hear Tammy's stories. Okay. Um, it happened. Brandon started getting yoga and introduced to it. I was in the yoga poses in college for physical fitness classes and to get some easy credit. And he introduced me to yoga philosophy. Eventually that led to 
encouraging me to come under the leadership or guidance of a swamp. I reached out to you and you and me into the fold. And at first I was I felt like I was making progress by now it felt like I kinda hit a wall. And um, my my Western indoctrination about Christ and and what the church teaches compared with what I'm learning now seems to really clash. So I had been struggled trying to um, get my brain wrapped around oh, I'm learning. But uh, Brandon's reading and the link that you directed me to about Jesus being in India and his kind of put things in perspective for me and, and now I'm ready to more in my in my growth, in my practice. Um have you had uh, any unique inner experiences of your own yet? As a matter of fact I have I've, uh, would, you, would you feel comfortable comfortable talking about it? You don't have to. Sure, absolutely. Okay. The other day, when you told me to go do Joppa, I... Uh, oh, tell I people went, what Joppa is. They might not know. Uh, well, my understanding, and I, I, I'm not absolutely positive I'm correct, but my understanding of it is your spiritual practice, your meditation and chanting of the mantra... Mantra, refer, okay, japa is the silent, internal repetition of whatever one's mantra is. That's what japa means. We use that word, and she used it conversationally, and I, I just wanted to make sure everybody understood what that word means. Please go ahead. Okay, so I um, as I was meditating, I... There was a cloudy image of a man dressed in gray with brown shoes in to wake up. And <laughs> later that day or the next day when I skated, I felt like I heard the audible, an audible voice telling me to... Uh, what's interesting about the cloudy image of the man I saw, really familiar with... Um, an individual whom I thought I had seen before when I was pregnant with my son Brandon at another time when my children were very kind of interesting. I don't know what to make of it. Very good. Plus you have the little movement thing that happened, right? Sorry, what did you say? The, the, the little movement thing where oh. whatever you sensed was more real to you than the human that was in the room? Oh, that was just like nothing I've exper experienced. It, the, I was meditating in front of the fireplace and I felt something um, approach me and with incredible and it approached me from my right side and darted around behind me, lingered my left shoulder that just lingered there. And um, I, its presence was more keen than the presence of the individual that was like, it, it was bizarre and fun. It was unique. It was a different kind of experience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something Having something in the room with you that you feel is more real than the human you're looking at <laughs> can be a bit unsettling. <laughs> it, it was a little rattling, but I wasn't frightened. Um, right. It didn't frighten me. 
it, it was pretty awesome. I haven't had that experience again, although the other night I was trying to fall asleep and I wasn't even moving and the, my bed shook and I'm on the bottom floor of an apartment, so I didn't understand what that was about. I got up, I, I was mildly spooked. I know that my physical safety is not a question. It was rattling because as I was trying to fall asleep, I was saying my mantra in my mind. Right. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Very good news. Anyone else on the line that I'm not aware of yet, Risa? Oh, um, hey, I can hear people now. I'm live. Right. Yeah, Carolyn's there. Hey, okay. look, you there. It's hey. Carolyn. I was going to say, I can hear you guys before. I don't know if you guys could ever hear me. The maintenance guy laughed. He was, he was laughing his ass off. He thought you guys were cool. Had a little bit of a flood, so they had to take care of that at the sink. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, well, that's why I was a little bit late, too, because I was already five minutes to three, and then all of a sudden the maintenance guy knocked, and then he needed something, so I had to run to the desk and get it while he was messing with it. And, uh, oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so then I, you know, then I had to talk to Caprice, who was at the desk, and explain what was going on with the sink and all that shit. So, um, but, yeah, we had fun last night. I haven't had a lot of a lot of sleep. We had, uh, see, it was a suicide attempt. There was a gal got beat up in the parking lot. Uh, so when the cops came by, they came by to uh, get the name of the gal who actually rented the room, and I happened to be in there when they came in, and they recognized me from last night because I helped with both the gal and the suicide guy, so they were like, well, you know, what can you tell us? I said, oh, I can't tell you more than I told you last night. Like, hey. uh, suicide guy's doing good, and so's the gal, so that's all right. Yeah, it's never boring. Um, I, well, I, I, that would be a good time to do mantra. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was, we were doing that last night. I tell you that. And i got to admit, though, for some reason, i got to admit, these cops down here like the hell out of me. I don't, can't understand why. They actually, they listen to me when they read my page, too. So they know that I publish shit about bad cops. But, you know, I put about that guy from Oklahoma, the cop that got murdered, because he was trying to expose what happened at Oklahoma City. And I told him, I said, hey, where's the good cops to fight for this guy that, you know, was a hero twice and got murdered for trying to expose what happened? And I got a couple cops, you know, coming telling me that, hey, fuck, we agree with you. We just can't say anything. And I'm like, well, then it's going to keep happening because, you know, you guys got, you guys are armed. You guys got fucking guns. Shit. Hey, Carolyn. Huh? Um, have you told these guys about Oath Keepers? You've heard of them, right? Yeah, I got several of them on uh, Facebook friends. And then that, so was that, that black guy that got killed in, in Oklahoma, the guy that stood up and was, he was on his way to his storage unit to get the evidence out to turn over to somebody when he got murdered. Yeah, and I like how they wrote it was suicide. He supposedly cut, slashed both of his arms uh, a, a total of 17 times and then crawled almost um, a half a mile and then over a fence and then shot himself point blank range in the forehead, but there was no gun, there was no gun found where he, he was found. Huh. But they wrote it up as suicide. Right. And other, and other, see, this is what pisses me off, and this is why I get in cops' faces. I said, "No, wait a minute. You guys will cover up when you guys fuck up." I said, "This is one of your own," and he got murdered. Where are the cops to say, "Wait a minute, wait a minute," you know? This guy got murdered because he was trying to expose that there were all kinds of other bombs and bullshit going on in Oklahoma City. And, I mean, this guy got, and they, they even said, the the uh, funeral parlor said that when they, were, they got the body, he had handcuff marks on both of his wrists and uh, that somebody had tried to clean him up, but in all of his wounds were dirt and grass, so they said he was dragged at some point. So, I mean, this poor bastard got tortured. I guess he wasn't going to say where the evidence was or, you know, some sort of, like, maybe combination lock or some bullshit or, you know, who did you tell? So this poor guy died heroically, and he's one of the guys that was climbing in the debris immediately after it all happened. That's how he saw the unexploded bombs and he saw 
ATF motherfuckers coming into the Oklahoma building and removing stuff and, and all this crap. He witnessed all this, and then he took evidence with him, and it stored it in his storage unit, and he was about to turn it over when he was on the phone with a fellow cop telling him, I'm being chased by Fed, is what he said. I need help. And then they find him dead, and the, you know, local DA says, oh, no, it was suicide. And when he's, you know, he fucking shot himself in the head after cutting himself and dragging himself a half a mile over a fence. You know, I, I, you know and that's what I get, you know, but see, the local cops here, they tell me, they said, well, we know what you're saying is true. So they, they're actually very cool here. I mean, it, it's just kind of strange, but where I'm at right now, this hotel, um, it was actually a lady cop that actually told me to come here. So actually, there are some honest ones. I mean, let's face it, there are honest cops everywhere. It's just some dicks because, you know, one, they lowered the entrance exam, so you, you know, hire more morons. Um, but then also they, you know, a lot of people, you know, let's face it, in most jobs, there's a lot of people that just cover their ass, you know? You know, it's, well, it's not yeah. just... It's not just police, it's doctors lie for each other, dentists, uh, it's I, doctors, it's lawyers, you know, yeah, you know. And it's a societal thing. Right, and they're, you know, they I must mean, keep getting the money. Right, so and I got whatever a, goes by the wayside so you can get paid becomes the primary concern. Well, yeah, and you want to, yeah, and also it's not, it's also fear, too. So some people, you know, they want to act up, but they don't really want to stick their neck out. Hold on. They don't seem to understand we're fucking immortal. If the people, once they realize that, you get a hell of a lot more power. Well, if folks will do this, what I'm teaching, <laughs> they'll find this out <laughs> quite directly and consciously, and the world can change. Right. I agree it, with you it's totally. Gonna take, it's going to take a bunch of us, but if people just wake up in this way that I'm talking about, if only that, the, the impact will be phenomenal. And there's all kinds of us. There's so many of us that chose to be here at this point in time and space to help with the cause of humanity. And I don't care how you come to that understanding. It is what's happening. I agree. I because agree. things are not certain. All possibilities are in play. Bad guys are doing bad things. Good guys are doing good things. And we're entering a galactic weather pattern, so to speak. And we'll soon be subject to emissions from our sun that are going to have effects on human consciousness. These effects will range from people just going freaking nuts to people waking up. And I each, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to say, let's have some more waking up. The hell with the nuts. We got all the nuts we need. Well, they have to be here too, though. And they, have to come, they have to come at their own speed as well. You can't just wake them up. They have to, they have to wake themselves. Oh, God, I find that out every day on Facebook when I get somebody that freaks out. And by the way, I don't know what's going on on my Facebook. I've gotten three messages from people that are saying that they've gone to comment on my most controversial things, like about this, um, I, I, I should be calling the black cop in Oklahoma. I can't remember his name. I apologize to him. I should remember. Um, it, it, you know, it's like tip at the guy in... Uh, JFK, everybody forgets the other cop that got killed. Um, you, I, I, you try to post things, and now right now people are saying that they're they're going to comment on my most controversial photo albums. It's got all the links and comments and shit, and they're being asked, "Do you really do you want to post this comment here?" I don't even know what the hell that means. Oh, Carolyn, you remember the first time I tried to post on your wall it asked me some security question before I could do it. I just hope they're not getting ready to bounce my ass off. Um, but, I mean, I'm very careful. I mean, that's why I get really angry at people that go on there and, like, want to cite violence. I immediately delete that shit because I know some of those people are stooges. 
And, you know, about two weeks ago, it really freaked me out. I had that um, psychologist guy who's an emeritus professor of psychiatry or whatever, and he was a total dick because he works in prisons, and he was saying how wonderful our prisons are, so obviously the guy's a dickhead. Um, or he's totally unaware. Uh, or he's taking his own drug. Um, but he, he immediately said, you know, all your conspiracy comments, Carolyn, have you talked to a professional yet? Because, you know, I think you need to talk to someone about paranoia. <laughs> I, have you been diagnosed with any medical condition? He wrote that and put that on my page. Yeah, it's totally good. <laughs> I immediately jumped all over his ass. I left it on my page, and I went immediately to his page, and I threw up underneath his comment how this guy worked for the government. Every goddamn penny he's ever made in his life came from government grants. How he said our prison system was good and healthy. So obviously everybody knows the guy's a poop and he's an asshole. Um, and I don't know. He hasn't, he hasn't said anything yet. Uh, about that, but the only thing that makes me nervous is he is actually retired now to Columbia, where I'm at, Columbia, Missouri. But so I don't know whether he's just some bizarre creepo on his own, or you know he was just another person fishing. Because you know I know I get people that come on my page to fish to try to get me to say we need a violent revolution, and I'm I'm not into the violent revolution anyway. It was not going to work. Gandhi's right. Martin Luther King was right. Jesus was right. You can, and, and you know, if everybody in the world thinks what they're going to do is just, you know, bring their guns to the party, that's exactly what they want you to do because then that is a total excuse for martial law and throwing everybody in a freaking camp, you know? But I thought that was kind of interesting. I, had, I, see, I don't even know the people that are saying they couldn't post, but, like, the fact that it happened to you, too, I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, but all the I gotta, I gotta tell you guys, I, I, I was really kind of freaked out when His Holiness instructed me to get on Facebook. Because I was like, what? I, I don't want to be on Facebook. Data mining, National Security Agency, you know. But now I'm working with people in Africa. Right. I'm right. working with people in South America. I'm working with people in India. I'm able to stay in contact with Brandon and and Tammy. And, you know, this has turned into something really useful, regardless whatever it may be used for. Right. I have no problem with hijacking their systems <laughs> for oh. our benefit. <laughs> Brilliant, Swami. That what you just said is so brilliant. The high, using their own tools, but you know, people have to do it smart, which is why, I, you know, like I said, I get a little ballistic when people say, "Yeah, we got to fucking kill them," you know, kill them all. And I said, "No, no, 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 no. You you don't post that kind of stuff. You stay intelligent. You put links. If you're going to talk about you know events to try to educate people, put the links, put the pe put the pictures, put the references. Stay calm. Don't incite violence." Um, first of all, it's not going to solve anything anyway. Uh, I, don't, I just don't. I believe it will not. But you know, it, it, you know, more bloodshed is not going to help anybody, and we don't need to foster fear porn. But you know, you got to stay calm. You got to put this stuff out there, and that's why I know a lot of people didn't understand what I told them. Facebook. I mean, geez, I've told you, Swami. You know this. I, I'm reaching people all over the place. I mean, we. I got a gal now that's the lawyer for. Um, Chavez in Venezuela, and we got to arrange a time because she'll come on and talk to us about whatever we want. Um, That's cool. We, we can do this on Blog Talk, whatever you guys want. Um, she's there. She's ready to go. Um, I, matter of fact, I also got a girl from Chile that's in Venezuela. And they want to tell people what's going on. Uh, I, I told her, I said, hey, I don't know if Chavez can speak English. Get him on the If he can speak enough English, let's do it. If he needs a translator, let's do it. Yeah, you know? I, I would. That would be interesting to uh, be instrumental if he were to release a statement about his cancer. Oh, he already has. He believes it was weaponized cancer. So does everybody in Cuba, where he went for treatment. But I mean, oh. see, most people in America still don't accept the fact that cancer is weaponized. They don't. 
they haven't read Dr. Mary's Monkey. They haven't read Me and Lee. They, they, they haven't listened even to the Coast to Coast interviews. There's other blog talk interviews. There's a Red Ice interview about it. Uh, there's our interview with, with Judith. Right. Uh, but, you know, people, uh, you got to remember, there's still only about 30, 35, 40 percent, maybe, that are really awake. I think it's growing, but you still got 30 to 40 percent that are always going to want to stay stupid. Because, one, they don't want to get out of their comfort zone. Uh, you know, whether you want to blame it on fluoride, Prozac, or whatever. Uh, you know, bad raising, you know, bad, you know, too much inbreeding in certain areas. But, you know, whatever the hell's going on. But, you know, a lot of people don't want to wake up. So it's, it's hard to wake them up. That's why, you know, I'm finding on my page, you know, it, I think it's very funny. Because I will sit there and publish as much about Obama as Bush. And I'm getting really slammed by people that consider themselves left, liberal, or Democrats, because, well, you can't fucking, you know, put down De uh, Obama, because Jesus, then we'll have, San, you know, Santori, or we'll have uh, Romney. I said, it doesn't matter if we have Ken Dollar or the Kenyan. These guys are funded by the Wall Street banksters and corporate fascist gangsters, folks. We need to go uh, third parties. We need to be aware and alert. I mean, I said, look, at we're at war under all these guys, and we're killing people, and it's collateral damage, and, and no way can we ever justify the amount of death since 9-11, even if you believe the government bullshit conspiracy theory. I mean, the amount of people, I mean, Iraq, I mean, there has to have been a million people in Iraq, by everybody's honest estimate. Now that three or four million have had to go into exile, you can't now go to a Christian or a Jewish synagogue in safety, what you could do under Saddam, you know, and, it, you know, we create these problems. It's like Afghanistan, those poor bastards have been in war for 60-plus years. I mean, the borders in Afghanistan and in Pakistan were Lord Mountbatten, you know, Prince uh, Charles' favorite uncle, they got blown up by the IRA. Thank God for the IRA. I guess they did something right. Uh, you know, he helped come up with the map, and he named Pakistan. I mean, these guys have been playing these games in the opium field. I mean, it's like... We aren't taught, I don't know how it's done in the Brighton, you guys, but in the United States, nobody's taught about, really, about how England was involved with the opium wars in China and, you know, how, frankly, you know, Afghanistan and, you know, the uh, Golden Triangle and Indochina. Hey, it's all been CIA funded. And, and because it became, it came from the MI6, which was part of the Royal Crown stuff that had to do with the so-called tea companies. These guys were these guys weren't making money off a of tea. I can't believe <laughs> that fucking tea is that profitable. No, it's opium. It's it, it, it's everything else, you know. And I, you know one thing I do want. We need to do a show about something. And I will say this everywhere. People have got to start saving their seeds for everything heirloom, and it's essentially for pot. And I'm going to say this to everybody because I'm going to tell you. They are doing so much GMA work on marijuana right now, and I hate that name. So, you know, hemp, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're going to make it legal after they have doctored it so much that it's going to be like tobacco. They're going to make it, they're going to make, they're going to make sure it becomes addictive, and they're going to create, they're going to put other things in it. And then they're going to tax it and be out there. So people have got to, you know, I, I wish Jay was here to be saving these podcasts because we need to tell people, save your own. And I don't care where you go on vacation, grow, 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 and throw your seeds everywhere. Everywhere you see a swamp, everywhere you see a river, everywhere you see some local areas because hemp can change the history because hemp is a great fuel, great material, great pharmaceutical, uh, recreational, whatever. But I'm saying we got to be very, very concerned because, you know, they, they allowed alcohol back in the system because they insisted on it being taxed. They pasteurized it. They got more chemicals in it to screw up your liver and your kidneys and make it more addictive. Um, and, but, they, they, you know, and tobacco, they did the same thing. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, you can have tobacco. Let's just, you know, put a million chemicals in it to make it more dangerous to screw up your insides and make it addictive. They couldn't release marijuana yet because it took so, it, it is very hard to bastardize a good weed, you know? And I'm telling you, they're working really, really hard. 
And the day they make it legal, don't trust one goddamn seed they sell. Smoke weed every day. Amen. Amen, yeah. Um, well, nice hearing from you, Caroline. I've got to go, Shwami. Thank you so much for your uh, wisdom tonight. Well, and I'll, um, I'll see you in a week's time, yeah? Hey. All right. Steve? Namaste. Steve? Yeah, yeah. Namaste. Yeah, yeah. Save your seat. <laughs> Save my seat. Save your seat, Steve. I'll save my seat. Thanks, <laughs> That's got to be the new handshake. When you meet somebody, go, hey, save your seat. <laughs> Bring back some seeds from Scotland. I got to oh, tell wait. you, when I when I saw the uh, the most the, the March 16th executive order, uh, 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 re, the national resource preparedness, whatever it was, um, and on the day this goes into effect, <laughs> all plants right. in the United States are under the control of the Secretary of Agriculture. Uh, it's true. Plants. No, not just this one, that one. No, plants. That's it. If it's growing, they own it. That's it. <laughs> what? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, you know, that's what made me think that maybe it wasn't my article on the, or the water company or the pedophilia. I think it might have been my work with the University of Indiana with bee colony collapse. And the fact that I, you know, was working with, they call it lasagna gardening, and I was feeding people around me. They don't want you to do victory survival gardens. No. I mean, I think that makes you more of a, a, a threat to these people. That, and they probably figured, oh, you're a fucking flake. Nobody gives a shit if you say about pedophilia are about the water company, but I think they were concerned because I was showing people you can grow your own food and be free from the grid. I, I really do. I think they're scared. That's, that's why we can't. That, that's why in so many cities now, you know, it's illegal to give food to the homeless. Right. Yeah. Because it may not be nutritious enough. Right. Food. We're not eating. Food, fuel, <laughs> and funding. I just put a thing on my page. It's almost six dollars a gallon in some parts of America for for gasoline and di and diesel. So food, fuel, and funding. But hey, anybody wants to start congregating, I'm telling you, start coming down here to Columbia because we're going to get the. I've got more options, and frankly, I need some other people down here to help me choose the options. I I, I don't want to make all the decisions myself because I'm I, I I'm getting people telling me land here, land here, land all this stuff, and I still got George Knapp saying come out to Las Vegas, but I don't know. I can't handle. I don't know if I can handle the desert. It'd probably freak me out. How how much did you say gasoline costs in the states? Almost six bucks a gallon in some places. It's uh, fifteen dollars a gallon over here. Oh so, well, yeah, but you guys always wear more than us. <laughs> Is that converted to U.S. dollars there, Steve? I've just converted it to U.S. dollars. So, yeah, it's wow. one pound. Okay, but I'm telling one you, one pound fifty a liter. But you gotta and remember, it's five liters on a gallon. So yeah, do the math. Hey, but we just took over the fucking largest oil fields and we control them. So it's like there's no reason why in the United States it's not like Libya used to be under Gaddafi where it was like ten cents a gallon. Ten cents a gallon. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean that's why they had to kill the poor fuck. I think he. Re I think I don't know if Saddam's dead, but I can guarantee a poor Gaddafi is dead. Steve, did you just say five times five? Uh, yeah, it's 15. That'd be 25. No, it's, it's one pound fifty per litre. And there's five litres in a gallon. Oh, okay. Right, and that's seven fifty, and then you double that, that's $15, isn't it? Well, okay. But you wow. know, you gotta, so, you know, they re, one of the other reasons, besides their high profit margins and all this petroleum, if they raise it, Rich people can drive anywhere they fucking want anyway. All they're mm -hmm. doing is limiting the ability for poorer people and misclassed people to move around because, one, exactly. in the United States, they've destroyed our rail system, and in only a few systems is the subway worth the shit, and the buses are shrinking, and obviously in the airport, my God, you got to be willing to get molested to go on a plane, and I wouldn't go near a fucking airport. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't even dare go on an airplane right now. Um, so it's like they're limiting, you know, how you can get the job, how you can visit, how you can communicate. You want to go march? Well, fuck, it'll cost you $100 in gas to get to a place to march. So they know what they're doing. They want to limit movement. 
I mean, that was one, that's the, one of the first things they teach you in military colleges. Limit and movement and logistics. And that's exactly what they're doing. And that's why it's like, God, I just, I go, I go so crazy. I just want to shake the shit out of people that sit there and say, well, I think you're getting a little bit far in these conspiracies. And I'm like, are you people crazy? <laughs> you know, Carolyn, to go along with that, I, we haven't really talked about this ever, I don't think, but that NAFTA superhighway idea, I, I don't know, I've kind of to go along with what you're saying there, I mean, cutting the country in half, I mean, would do a lot to hinder movement from side to side. And you also um, realize that the, uh, oh. the, the royal crown in Spain owned that highway. Right. Um, damn it, there was something I was saying, and now you I'm distracted me. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do some more meditating, research. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some more meditating. Damn I'm it. Gonna no, to uh, go. I'm going to have to go, guys. Good night and God bless you all. Guys. All right, take care, Steve. Hey, love Bye. you, Steve. Steve promised to give, uh, oh, hey, he's gone, but hey, uh, Nick, tell him to give Debbie a hug, will you? Yeah, I'm sure he will. Okay, I, I think I remember what I was going to say. Um, right, the idea of the the NAFTA superhighway going from north to south, I found it funny that you know there was a lot of work going down in uh, that uh, Texas corridor. I forget what they were calling it exactly, but there was a lot of uh, Texas corridor. Which what was that? The Trans Texas. Yes. Corridor. Yes, that's it. Um, yeah, lots of work going on down in Texas, and then I, I guess you know along 35, there's been a lot of construction type things. But I also found it very weird that the other notable thing that no one really pointed to to that was the collapsing of our bridge here in Minneapolis on the other end. <laughs> uh, yeah, they the bridge collapsed, and then they decided to put in a 10 lane bridge that is exactly you know 10 lanes is basically what the plan for the NAFTA superhighway is. And do you know who built your bridge? Oh, I know it was that controlled demolition that cleaned it out. They cleaned out nine, uh, you know, uh, ground zero, nine eleven. Who who built it? Uh, the uh, Royal Spanish and Dutch okay. financed it through their bank. So it is actually foreign owned. Sweet. <laughs> That's you, but see, oh, I'm a conspiracy nut, right? Yeah. But it, and but it's really funny to me because really the only crazy conspiracy I've ever heard is a, you know. A bunch of guys dreaming of 72 virgins, like any guy really wants a virgin, give me a break. Um, most guys would dream of 72 hookers, give me a, you know, come on, let's be real here. Um, I, I don't know. That's what I said. If, I mean, I, I don't know where everybody's at, and like I said, we're not recording this, so we don't have Jay to do all this stuff. Actually, but, Carolyn, on. I was going to interject. It will, I have... carry on. it will carry on on the BTR. Good. This okay. will be no, what Carolyn's getting at is I, I have taken over for Jay, and I've been recording them, Carolyn. Good. Okay, so put them out there. And by the way, has anybody heard how Jay's doing? I really am. i got to get a hold of him again. Uh, he was on he was on the uh, Friendship Agenda thing on Skype for a while. I haven't. I haven't things, are, things are going well. I have not been on the Friendship Agenda in a while. It's not because I'm ignoring it. I've just... I've only, I, right now, I'm just... I really am swamped. I know that sounds like bullshit to a lot of people, but... Um, I, I can't even explain. You got I, stuff to do. Well, I can't even explain the amount of legal books. And I had to help the disabled guy in St. Louis get out because he was very dangerous. And I had to help him. And it's going to help in the long term because now that he got his inheritance, you know, it's not really an inheritance. I called it that. But actually it was, um, it was a big legal fight over an uncle that died. So now he's going to get the money. And I had to get him out of a very dangerous situation. So he's coming down next week. And... Uh, a gal that's an absolute pain in the ass, but it's been somewhat helpful. I actually feel sorry for her. She's kind of a holy roller nutcase, but um, she's got about 65 animals, and she's totally Seventh-day Adventist now. So she, every time I talk to her, she just can't wait for the apocalypse. Um, oh, God, I got it. But, you know, her husband dumped her for somebody half her age, half her size, and um, I've been trying to help her. So I, got, I negotiated a um, early retirement for her. And so she, now I gotta find her a job though, cause she keeps wanting to show up every fucking day and drive me nuts. Um, she's a nice person, but I can't I can't deal with this fire and brimstone shit that she's into. Uh, I'll, I'll probably kill her now that she's, you know, I got an early retirement. I'm gonna probably kill the woman. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, you know it's like, you know, oh yeah, trust me. Um, oh, I don't know if anybody starts telling you that Jesus is actually into violence. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand where these religions come from. I mean, I I'll, I'll tell you look. 
I mean, literally, I was talking to her the other day about Supernatural, how I liked the show, and oh my God, she was having a fit because it was against her religion, and, and oh, she goes, oh, Jesus is really Michael the Archangel, and Jesus is going to come back and smite the fuck out of everybody, and I'm like, this is what your religion teaches, that Jesus is violent? She's, oh, no, no, yeah, it's in the Bible. I can show you because they taught us in Bible school that, and, you know, and, and, I, and he goes, well, she goes, don't you remember that I got rid of the money changers? And I said, yeah, it's like the banksters. I said, he overturned a couple things, but, he, you know, I said, no where is it written that he went and got violent and beat the shit out of somebody or kicked somebody in the nuts or something. And he, <laughs> she goes, oh, no, no, no. She goes, I, I remember them specifically reading that he, well, he used a whip and that he was working on the whip the night before. And I said, I said, well, okay, I don't know if he had a whip or not. And I said, maybe he was slapping it around to get these guys to move it. I said, nowhere does it say he hit anybody with it. So I said, if he had been, the Romans would have arrested him, you idiot. I said, Christ, these people were in the control like Nazis and the current cops. I said, they would have arrested the son of a bitch if he'd have been, I mean, if he just chased people out, that's one thing. But I said, if he'd have hurt somebody, they would have used that. And I said, you don't hear that in his trial with Pontius Pilate. So I said, what your, your, your theory is bullshit. And, and, you know, and she's like, oh, no, no, no. My Lord's going to come back, and he's going to smite the shit out of people. And I'm like going, God, it's like nothing that I could possibly find ever in any words, in, whether it's the real Gospels or agnostic Gospels or fuck-up Gospels or Satan, anybody's Gospels ever gives Jesus any implication that that man would be violent. I mean, he's like Gandhi, he's like Martin Luther King, which is why they kill these people. You know, they're telling people to come together and, you know, uh, turn the other cheek, you know, um, you know, take care of people. He's taking care of kids. He's not like, you know, the Pope Ratsy that's, you know, hiding pedophilia. I mean, could you, you know, how anybody could ever justify any of what stuff that's going on now? Um, and, and that's why I said, you know, so I've been a little bit busy. I, I got her her early retirement, but I'm probably going to kill the woman shortly. But, um, I, you know, I not uh, Swami. But you have meditated, yes? Swami, Swami, Swami <laughs> you tell me how to deal with this stress. Meditate. Meditation. 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 Do you know the mantra? Well, why don't you give me one that I can use to deal with this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, okay, like I said, I'm, I'm done now with Fred. I got her taken care of. So now I'm going to go back to Carolyn, 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 Carolyn. Yeah. It's time to listen to the Swami. Thank you, Nick. Swami. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Here's what you do. For the fastest effect, if you will do what I am going to instruct you to do, I will. I will. Twice a day, every day, for a minimum of 20 minutes. Okay. No problem. Well, you will see things develop in ways you may not currently comprehend. Okay? Right. Now, here's what you do. You sit. You get comfortable. I recommend a chair. Close your eyes. Turn off as much no I understand the, the environment that you live in, but turn your stuff off other stuff you can't control. Um, close your eyes and just repeat in your mind over and over and over again the following. Say it after me. Om. Om. Nama. Nama. Shivaya. Shivaya. Om. Nama. Shivaya. Om Nama Shivaya. Om Nama Shivaya. Okay. Om Nama Shivaya. That's it. Now, while you're doing this, okay. 
it's not important what words mean because what you're doing let's let's stick with the science of it okay as long as I'm not invoking some crazy ass thing you know okay let, let me just ask you you've heard people here on meditative living discuss yes. their experiences yes right what does that lead you to believe well, I trust you. I trust Nick. I trust Teresa. Okay. I trust. I trust you guys. Very well. Um, here's what's going to occur as you begin to do this. If you've not had any sort of extensive experience with meditation, well, it's will... been. Let's put it this way: it's been a bunch of years, and it was the old. Um, I don't know, Maurice. Um, Oh, God. TM stuff. Oh, okay. TM? Yeah. Okay. We use mantras too, but it's different. Um, anyway, just do that mantra. You sit down, you close your eyes, and you do that. Now, what's going to occur is your mind will start to bring up regular thought pattern. You know? You'll be going along, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. I gotta, I gotta get this thing done, and I gotta, I gotta. Well, see, when you realize that the mantra has stopped, and this thought is there, regardless what it is, okay, simply stop and pick up the mantra again. Om Nava Shiva Ra. Om Nava Shiva Ra. Right? Shiva Ya. Shiva Ya. Om Nava Shiva Ya. Yeah. Om Nava Shiva Ya. I, I, I will reset. Can you get her the script? <laughs> yeah. That, thank you. Um. Om Nava Shiva Ya. Okay. All right. Thank you, reset. No problem. Now. What, what you are doing with this is you are hijacking the vibratory frequency at which your transmission system is expressing. The body no, is not... Told, hold on. I, this is, this is where Swami talks. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, the body is both a receiver and a transmitter. You've been around people whose attitude you can feel if you have any awareness what at all. You know, you can get a bad vibe off somebody, a good vibe off somebody. All right? This is the way they think is what they are. And this is the vibe that emanates from them. By doing this practice, you are taking control of the frequency being vibrated from within your body out into the world. Okay. And by the repetition, you are setting up a frequency response that is conducive to the expansion of your personal awareness. So that's what we're trying to do. All right. All right. And that's what occurs while you're doing the mantra. You've seen Dr. Emoto's yes. stuff water, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, I believe in okay. it. Right. So that effect that you see from the positive stuff is what is occurring inside your physical body, these structures, these natural geometric patterns are occurring and straightening things up that would normally be chaotic in your normal frequency range of your average thought. Does that make sense? It does. Well, okay. and I'll be honest with you, that's why I, I, I was actually on my page even, and other people, I was trying to figure out, because you know how, like, I don't believe in any of this, old, the Old Testament is just fire and brimstone bullshit, everybody just put the books together, but I was like even always wondering when they said, you know, when um, supposedly Jesus said, here, repeat this prayer, 
I don't think the prayer meant shit. I was thinking it was probably whatever the frequency and the combination of the Our Father in real Aramaic, if you heard it, there had to be something there that was distracting you and, and putting you in a different state. You know what I mean? When he says, well, no, just repeat this after me. And I understand what you're saying, because I used to meditate all the time, and I still try to. I know this sounds crazy, but I do get more distracted. And it's like, I swear to gosh, every time I sit down and try to meditate, something will happen to distract me. Well, the best thing to do is don't try to meditate. All right. Just meditate. Just sit down. Do uh, the mantra. The yeah, rest happens on its own. Okay. But I'm telling you, like last night, just a perfect example was last night. I the, went in there with the mama cat and the kitten, and I was going to sit there and relax with the kitty cat. They were actually on my... I, I actually... I was getting ready to take a shower, so don't laugh. I was naked on the bed with the cats, and the kittens were laying on my tummy, and I thought, how cute is this? I was take a nice picture, but not that nice. But I was like, petting the cat, and I was like, I was just so relaxed, and I was just about to go in the shower. I was going to put the kittens back where they would be safe, and Mom would be happy. And that's when all of a sudden the weird stuff happening with the gal getting beat up, so I had to run out and help somebody. So all of a sudden, you know, the whole flavor of everything changed. You know, okay. I couldn't get. Well, that's you know, okay. That's okay. That was just run, a, but I came back to, the, to meditate, then. meditate. But I came back to meditate after that, and I really was. You know, and that's when all of a sudden I got a call from the lobby. Can you help with the guy trying to commit suicide? So it's like I, I don't know why, but something keeps stopping me from doing what I need to do. Well, the, well, okay. Well, right. the, well, the best thing to do then is. Uh, Go to somewhere where nobody is going to bother you. Go, go for a walk, find a nice, quiet little spot, and do it there. Because it, if you know that um, you're going to be uh, distracted at right. the place where you're trying to do it at the moment, then it's not yeah, going to work. I'm serious. The last three weeks, every time so, I try to get stuff done, I keep getting distracted. Just go for a little walk. It'll, it'll do you good to to uh, do it outside as well because um, you, you know, you're in nature then and um, this this will be a natural occurrence in your mind. So yeah, take yourself off to somewhere where you know that nobody is going to distract you. That's the best advice from me personally. Yeah, these were really limited extreme instances that don't occur daily so yeah, your happen. your attempt to daily twice a day plus do this as you are falling asleep and you can begin to influence um, the dream state as well all right so uh, so so just do that now, I'm serious that's all you got to do all right, I'm going Everything to try else to... will occur on its own. I will talk to you privately as often as necessary uh, to to keep you moving in the right direction. Yeah, the exactly. only the only goal I have in interacting with you is assisting you to wake up. Therefore, you, Carolyn Rose Goida, regardless any of your faults, failures, or anything else can be utilized by the divine to the best result. And you're I, already well on the way into doing that. Yeah, so that I, will just continue. But I welcome your help because I do did, I, 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 these things happen all the time. But And also, Nick, too, you're so right. I, I, I didn't even thought about that because in the past, when I was at my house, I had like a third of an acre. I could go out in my garden. I would go out to the greenhouse. I would go outside to nature. And I, I, I could just totally push that away. You know, all the other distractions, and I, I've been missing that. So that that was a good point, Nick. I really appreciate you mentioning that because I do need to find that, that spot. And, I mean, um, I have a hard time turning off. You know what I mean? I, I always have. 
But, 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 but maybe you're not letting yourself do that. And uh, that's uh, this is a good way to enable yourself to just shut off. You're giving yourself the time to uh, not uh, be bothered with the, all the stuff that's going on. Uh, and and ultimately, um, it's, you know, all, all the time is there for you, you know, um, you've, uh, I, I think people feel, sometimes feel guilty about giving themselves time to just sit and relax and, um, yeah, you, you just need to give yourself that, uh, that option. Well, you know, Eddie even said that when he was here in, in Columbia. Because he kept saying, he goes, no, no, you got to stop, you got to sit up. But I got to admit, there's so much to do that my whole life I have never been really good at just. Well, well maybe, this, maybe this is the lesson that you're here to learn <laughs> to just okay. take the time for yourself because as much it as will not I'm come thinking, to you in any other way. Yeah, all those things are. Yeah, but how do you not feel guilty that you weren't doing something? Listen, 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 listen. All those things are important, but they're not as important as you. And they, they're not. They're all just things just happening. And, but the most important thing for you in this experience is you. So. Okay, so I mean, I can't be. I can't be my focus, can I? Of yes. course you can. Because you can. then, it, okay, this internal focus, the divine, however you choose to associate and interact with that, can then more and more and more as you slow the mind down and find what is there to be found, <laughs> God knows the what. more and more and more your inherent talents can be utilized in a perfect manner that becomes almost effortless. The stress of have to do, have to do, have to do goes yeah. away. You don't need that anymore. You've had plenty. Let it ride. You can sit in the owner's skybox and watch this whole battle for humanity on planet Earth play out while your body is involved in the effort doing whatever is most appropriate for Carolyn Rose Goida to do. It will, it will just come to you. And I will stand with you every day, if necessary, and keep pointing you at this. Because your mind is going to keep going, oh, no, I can't, oh, no, oh, no, I'm not doing, blah, 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 and just a yeah. bunch of bullshit. Yeah, but I mean, bullshit. there are. It's all, you're full of shit, Carolyn. I'm <laughs> trying to empty that. I know, yeah, but I'm, let me. see, I can't. That's the ego. That's just the ego, ego saying, me, 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 me. And you've got the... Uh, the ego is very much like a naughty child. And, uh, you know, but it's not, I'm not, that, I mean, that's like, I can't see not getting involved. It's a short, like, short shock. Yeah, but how do you not get, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you got to get involved when you see these things you happen. Are involved. Yeah, yeah. I'm not you saying are doing involved. things. Continue I'm, all of that. Just do the meditation. Yeah, and yeah. the rest of it will get easier. Well, I'm sorry, but I, I got to admit, it feels selfish to sit there and say, I should be so weak that I need to do this, when I should be going doing other stuff. If you well, do that, this, all the rest will get done very easily. Or you can stress out and give yourself an ulcer and go nuts and whatever listen, else from all this other... That's listen, your choice. Listen to the Swami. He knows. Okay. He knows. I was once... I was once the conspiracy nut guy too. That's how. That's why I'm here in this format. 
through Friends of Freeman. Because these folks, some of them are just waking up. Some of them have been into all this for a long time. I mean, I've, I've been knowing about the Federal Reserve and all that since the, the late 80s. You know? And I've been through the whole, right. the whole shebang. Right. And what I have found is the way that makes the most sense and it's and it's not all in a big flash you, okay. it takes work and well, every, work. every human being that has become enlightened and liberated you are not you are not kept out of that group you just haven't done it yet and when they did it they did something like this because if you don't take time away from the mind and it's nonstop, got to do, got to see, got to, got to, got to, then where is there ever room for this other, more intense reality to show up? You're not, not, not making any room. So by the, by the doing of the mantra, by the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> taking control of the frequency you are vibrating it it just it just it fixes things from the inside out and then what you find in meditation you'll start finding just popping up in your regular day okay. yeah, and it just I, keeps getting better and you'll, rec you'll recognize that yeah all yeah all is mine. And so this stuff that's going on out here is just mine. It's just the whole consciousness just playing out in front of your eyes. I agree with you on that. But I, I, I do have to admit, I don't do the meditation. I don't do the meditation and the exercise and yoga like I used to, which I need to get back to. And I gotta quit letting the distractions stop me from doing that because I was healthier when I did that. So we got about thirty seconds. I mean, we can keep going. I'm recording, but the podcast is gonna end in thirty seconds. Oh, that's all right. We don't need to, you know, keep going. On. I understand. But I okay. I understand what you guys are saying. And actually, what you guys have all said have, has actually helped me today. Because Good. I have to admit, I keep letting myself get distracted no, by this. Okay. I'm gonna say goodbye. Namaste. Love you. Pleasant dreams, son. Thank you, Swami. Namaste. 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 Om Namah Shivaya. Blessings to you.